Now let's talk about the uh, non-parametric alternative test to independent samples and the pair samples to test. So first we have a uh, Man and Whitney U test, which is the uh, non-parametric alternative to independent samples T test. You uh, run this test uh, in case the normality assumption is violated. Um, you know the normality assumption for the independent samples. And also you run this test when the data uh, in each group um, uh, is actually indeed ordinal level of measurement. Remember that for independent samples t-test, all the data should be at least interval level of measurement, right? Because you need to be able to calculate the, uh, the, the mean, right? But in case your data are in ordinal levels, such as like ratings um, from like a survey, um, and then you want to compare um, their overall rating, um, say before and I know now um, between like a different groups, different independent groups. Then um, you can use Man Whitney U test to compare them because the Man Whitney U test is based on the the rank sum. So uh, indeed, it is actually um, you know. Uh, designed for the ordinal level of measurement. And also, it'll actually convert, transform the interval or ratio level um, of measurement data into the rank in order. So that's how it is um, testing uh, the two different independent groups. So let's just uh, take a look at the um, our old data, the sample log mar VA data to illustrate how to run the Man and Whitney U test. Uh, well, actually, let me just um, explain the Wilcoxon sign rank W test, and then I'm going to show you how to run both Man and Whitney and the Wilcoxon sign rank test. So Wilcoxon sign rank test is the non-parametric alternative to pair sample T test. Again, you use this when the normality assumption is violated the normality of difference data, right? And when the data are indeed uh, ordinal level of measurement. So let's just um, open the data. Okay, so this is the, uh, the sample logmar VA data uh, from week two. You can find the data, uh, actually the Excel sheet. Um, under the levels of measurement folder. So um, this is actually um, uh, data with you know different um, um, designs. So if you want to compare the visual, any visual acuities um, by gender, then it'll become the independent samples T test. So or, or if you want to just compare the visual acuity uh, between any two, um, the eyes, right? The OU versus OD, OU versus OS, or OD versus um, uh, OD versus OS. Um, you can actually run this as pair samples T test, right? Even though they are different eyes, but it is actually um, they are belong to the same subject, right? So we can actually you know, consider them as related. Okay, so let's just run the independent samples uh, test first. So let's just compare the visual QT, the binocular visual QT by gender. So click on T test, independent sample T test. Now you move all you to the dependent variable and gender to the grouping variable. Now, you want to do mean difference, descriptive, descriptive plots, homogeneity test, normal test. Right. So this is the output. And if you look at, hmm, see, um, you can just uh, quickly see that, you know, these mean difference will not be statistically significant, right? Um, and as you can see, <laughs> the location of the median is quite far from the mean of each group 
uh, which suggests that you know these data are not probably normally distributed. Um, so 0.28, 0.24. So in terms of a mean, and um, it will not be that is. I mean, well, it, there's not much difference. Um, okay, equality variance uh, is okay, but we have problem with the normality, right? All three tests uh, is way less than 0.05, meaning that the normality assumption is violated, right? So we cannot use this. Um, okay, so P. So in this case, because the normality is violated, we need to take the minute with new test to see what it is. You have to ignore the mean difference and the 95% confidence interval. You do not report these values, okay? Because even the developer didn't know how it is possible to actually calculate the mean difference for a minute with new test. It is not calculating the mean difference. I mean, this function is taken from the R, and then it, it, it was not clear, you know, how this man with new test provide mean difference and 95% confidence interval for the mean difference. So you should just ignore this, only look at this and the P value. So this is a man with new statistics, right? And the P value for man with new test is. Uh, 0.339, which is greater than alpha 0.05, right? So what that means is that there is no significant difference um, between male and female in terms of their binocular visual acuity. Okay, so this is how you run um, the Man and Whitney test. And let's run the pair sample T test. So let's just compare binocular versus one monocular, the right eye. And mean difference, descriptive, descriptive plots, normality test, and C. Um, well, there's a quite a lot of overlap um, here. So we cannot really see, if, even though this is not covering the mean of the other. But, you know, if it were to be um, normally distributed um, in a difference, then it would not be, you know, statistically significant. But if you look at this, <clears throat> the mean VA, there's almost like a 0.1 difference, more than 0.1 difference, right? Um, so which is kind of a suspicious. And here we go, the test of normality. Again, for pair sample t test, you only have to check the normality of difference, and in all three tests is actually uh, telling us uh, uh, are telling us that the um, the normality assumption is violated. So we cannot use this, right? Um, well, even the t test is actually signaling the significant difference, but see because. Um, the Jamovi is um, thinking that these two groups are like independent samples, right? That's why you have this large um, error bar. So you have to actually adjust accordingly to take account into the design component. Anyhow, because we cannot use this a t-test, we need to take Wilcoxon sign rank test. Um, yeah. Um, as I expected, and the difference is significant by uh, Wilcoxon's W sign rank test. So this is actual statistics. Um, so it says 23 pairs of values were tied. Um, so basically, we have um, uh, 23 pairs of having the same um, log mark visual acuity. So if the rank are tied, then you need to do some correction, but you don't have to know this. Um, again, just to uh, ignore this mean difference, tender error of the difference, and 95% confidence interval of the difference, all you have to know is this, and I don't know why it really becomes, hmm. 
anyhow so this is the uh, edit 3 and this is a way less than 0.05 so that means um there is a huge difference between uh, the binocular visual acuity and the monocular visual acuity uh, to the right eye but if you look at that see um obviously the binocular visual acuity is much better than the um single right eye visual acuity so this is how you run um you know wilcoxon sign drank test and the man with you test in case then the melt assumption is violated So we're back to the slide. So um, I hope you now understand, you know, when to use these non-parametric tests and when to use the parametric test. Um, so here's kind of a sample um, blurb how to report um, the statistics when you run one of the, um, the non-parametric alternative to T test. So this, um, the Manet Whitney test is a bit U equals this is actual statistics and this is the p-value right so that's what we calculated before and when you use these one of the non-parametric alternative then um, the respective um, descriptive statistics you want to report is actually the median and the iqr as for the um, the measures of dispersion and median as a central tendency measure right so you make sure that you report median and IQR um, as the descriptive summary descriptive statistics for the variables when you used um, the one of the non-parametric alternative to the t-test, and that is same for the um, Wilcoxon-Stein rank test here, right? So the W. So I actually found um, kind of a strange because I got this number before, uh, but it was 83 right in uh, the previous illustration so if we just flipped if we flip the uh, the order of comparison so i so in the previous illustration i put the binocular ou first and then od but when i i ran this myself i actually flipped the orders so i put the od first and then ou then you will get this large statistics but it will be uh, that the basic result will be the same right so um again because you use the w the non-parametric test you have to report um the median and iqr as um summary descriptive statistics so um that's pretty much about uh, everything about you know how to compare two groups so um you know when you are comparing two groups here is a kind of a flow chart you uh, can follow so for any data um, before you run any inferential testing uh, such as t-test you have to the first thing you need to do is to run exploratory data analysis right so you look at the data by plotting box plots or error bars and calculate all the you know the summary descriptive statistics okay and then you need to um, identify if the groups um, that are being compared are independent or not right if they are then you need to check the assumption uh, if the data are normally disputed and on top of this there's an um, um, equality of variance check right uh, but the normality assumption is more you know more important than the equality of variance because we have welch's t-test another parametric test uh, in case the equality of variance assumption is violated so if they are normally distributed then we can run the independent samples t-test if they are not then you have to choose Men and Whitney U test, right? So uh, this is in case uh, the groups are independent. But if they are not independent, so if they are related, 
then the respective assumption you need to check is again the normality of the difference data all right and if they are um, normally distributed then you can run the dependent samples or the pair samples t test otherwise you're gonna have to um, run the Wilcoxon signed rank test so this is um, basically um, how to the steps in running uh, the t-test basically